Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Fortunately, this psalm is number 8 in both translations, so let's take a look at what it says. Unto the end, for the presses, a psalm of David. A title and description of the psalm. O Lord, our Lord, how admirable is thy name in the whole earth, for thy magnificence is elevated above the heavens. Here, God is placed into a higher position than that of the entire world, even heaven itself. And this is literally true. While heaven is invariably good and protected by God, it isn't utterly timeless, nor is it self-sufficient, nor is it the source of its own existence or perfection. God has all of these supremely good qualities, and many more besides, which heaven doesn't have. Out of the mouth of infants and of sucklings thou hast perfected praise, because of thy enemies, that thou mayest destroy the enemy and the avenger. Even children are able to praise God with sincerity, and because of this, God gives them the ability to thwart the will of his enemies. For I will behold thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast founded. It's not really that hard to believe in God if you're paying attention to the good things he's created. What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Human beings aren't worthy of the attention of God, but they receive it anyway. Thou hast made him a little less than the angels. Thou hast crowned him with glory and honor. The angels have vast power, knowledge, and skill. The thing that makes us similar to them, however, is our ability to recognize ourselves and our identities and our free will, which we can use to make choices about our lives. Animals don't have these abilities, but angels do. Because of this, God is prepared to give man great glory in heaven if he'll only cooperate. And hast set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast subjected all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen. Moreover, the beasts also of the fields, the birds of the air, and the fishes of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. Human beings were given authority over all plants, animals, etc., the lesser creatures in the book of Genesis. This authority can't be taken away from us, because humans can always make plans to overcome and entrap even the strongest of beasts, because they don't have the kind of free will that we do, and therefore tend to act in predictable ways. However, while our authority over beasts can't be taken from us, it can be voluntarily surrendered. Many people have wrongly placed animals into positions of greater value than human beings, even passing laws to force their fellow man to comply with their faulty view of the world. While our authority over animals should be used wisely, and not wastefully, the authority itself is not something that should ever be threatened, because generally, when people give something in nature authority over them, bad consequences tend to follow. There are some things that are just contrary to how God wanted them. We need to be responsible rulers of nature, but never its servants. We have only one master who is in heaven. O Lord, our Lord, how admirable is thy name in all the earth. This is because the name of God refers to God. His name is great only because he is great. Because no one can be greater than God, no name can be greater than his. This is a pure song of praise and adoration for the one who deserves it most. It's full of references to the good and amazing things that God has done and his plans for us and our futures. Praising God is probably the most important thing we can do, just as how little God is appreciated is the greatest injustice. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.